Hello, my name is Melinda Huntley, and I am the Tourism Program Director for the Ohio Sea Grant College Program with The Ohio State University. Today we're going to talk a little bit about nature-based tourism. What is nature-based tourism? Well, it can be defined as tourism that is directly or indirectly dependent on the natural resources. Now, that last part of that definition is extremely important, the natural resources. Any tourism, nature-based tourism activity that you undertake must really take a very close look at the nat natural resources of your community. After all, you can't promote to bird watchers if you don't have the birds. And you certainly can't promote canoeing if you don't have a launch ramp or miles of scenic waterways. Is nature tourism the same as ecotourism? Well, in many cases, you may think they're very similar because both ecotourism and nature-based tourism require natural areas. But in essence, they are very different. Ecotourism prioritizes learning. Learning becomes even more important than recreation and entertainment when you're talking about developing a true ecotourism project. Ecotourism also involves giving back to resource conservation. In some cases, a hotel will donate a portion of a room night to resource conservation, or part of a tour guide's fee is given back to resource conservation. Ecotourism also incorporates local involvement. And this is much more than what we're used to with getting community stakeholder input. You have to remember that ecotourism basically started in third world countries, and it was a way of really getting into a community and reviving its economics. In that case, the community was involved in every aspect of the ecotourism development, from the design of the hotel lodges to training the tour guides. Now, that doesn't mean that we can't incorporate as many of these ecotourism principles into what we do in the state of Ohio when we look at nature-based tourism. If we prioritize learning, if we include an opportunity for visitors to donate to the resource conservation, and if we involve our local communities in our decisions, we'll have a much stronger and richer nature-based tourism project. How does it fit? What are the benefits to nature-based tourism? Well, number one, nature-based tourism can be an economic boom for communities. If we just look at hunting, fishing, and wildlife watching at the state of, in the state of Ohio, you'll see that nature-based tourism or the spending by those folks who are fishing, hunting, and watching wildlife contribute over $3.2 billion, and over $915 million of that is spent in traveling. Nature-based tourism also closes a seasonal gap. A great example of this is the Jet Express ferry boat that operates out of Port Clinton and travels to Putin Bay. To earn some additional revenue during May, when the season's a little slower, the Jet Express started doing birding cruises to Canada. Folks spend overnight stays in Ohio, but travel up to Canada to see some of the migratory birds. Another example is an event that might occur, such as the Midwest Birding Symposium, that occurs in September and really brings in uh, close to a thousand bird watchers into a community that's typically not very busy that time of year. Nature-based tourism also provides opportunities for environmental education. Interpretation and providing environmental education creates a much richer project a product for the nature traveler. So it creates a real opportunity for us to expand the importance of stewardship and the importance of information. Nature-based tourism also helps with conservation efforts. If you give an example of this, anytime you have a nature-based tourism activity that's bringing in visitors, those visitors are bringing dollars into a community. It helps with justifying some of the preservation efforts that are occurring with some of our wild places and some of our natural lands. But most of all, why should we be involved in nature-based tourism? It's in demand. Nature-based tourism is one of the fastest growing market segments in the state of Ohio. Are all nature travelers the same? Perhaps the best way to uh, demonstrate this theory is that, no, they're not all the same. Take a look at your own hobby. Is it photography? Is it bubblegum collecting? Is it Civil War? How avid are you 
about your hobby? How much money do you spend on your hobby? How often do you travel? You can measure a person's avidity level and be able to see just how specialized a traveler they may be. And avidity can be de defined as the state of being enthusiastic and vigorous about a pursuit. We all know people who may be vigorous and enthusiastic about their hobby. In fact, you may be one yourself. And this is the basic principle we can apply to nature-based tourism to figure out the best way to provide the experiences these folks are seeking. We do this by looking at a spectrum of nature-based tourism. And we look at different alternatives and different things that people are seeking from the very specialized or the avid, the hardcore nature tourist to a more generalized approach. And the specialist is someone who basically takes more frequent trips, they travel in smaller groups, they're very, very avid about what they do, whether they're bird watchers or bicyclists or anglers. On the generalist side of the spectrum, we have folks who, they may enjoy a walk in the woods, but they're also looking for other things to do. They may visit an amusement park. They're gonna take uh, more, uh, fewer trips, but they're gonna really expect more services, more interpretation, and more amenities. Why bother with differentiating the nature-based traveler? Why don't we just treat them all the same? Couple reasons. First of all, we know that we all have limited resources. So our ability to define what type of nature traveler we are going to seek to bring into our communities makes sense with limited resource base. We can better manage visitors when we're able to provide the experiences that are sought after by the nature traveler. And it also minimizes user conflicts. Let's consider a, a nature traveler and perhaps a bird watcher. And just as he spots that uh, long awaited northern shrike, he encounters a, a group of uh, second graders squealing down the trail. So you can see how the experiences the first traveler sought was much different than the group of second graders. And so if we're able to kind of differentiate our natural travelers, look at our resources, and determine which market we're able to attract, we're able to minimize any user conflicts. By taking a look at our nature-based traveler and defining what type of experience we want to offer, we can also build the marketing messages and the experiences to attract the correct market. What are some tips for developing nature-based tourism in your activity? Focus on the resources. They are the most important thing. They will tell you what you can offer and how you can offer these activities. Think regionally to minimize impacts to the environment. If you're only out there promoting one natural area or park, then all that impact goes to only one location. Where if you invite your neighbors to the table and connect some resources from throughout the region, you not only minimize any impact to one location, but you also create a much richer product for the traveler. Involve your community, particularly your resource managers. If you're going to develop a na nature-based tourism strategy for your community, then they need be to be at the table as well. Recognize that not all nature travelers are the same and be able to design both your messages and your experiences to attract a full realm of nature travelers. You can find more information about nature-based tourism on the Ohio Tourism Toolbox under nature-based education. And also feel free to contact me if you have any additional questions or you want to start a dialogue about how to develop nature-based tourism in your community.